I'm Deborah Roof from Minneapolis, Minnesota in the United States and I am a specialist in a high and profound giftedness and I wrote a book called The Five Levels of Gifted because of the highest level children who had yet to be described adequately so that parents knew if they had that kind of child. Did quite honestly moderately gifted is the average of people in the professions and that is a typical range of about 125. And so if you get up to 145 on a test that only goes to 145, and I would say even a little under that, <laughs> you, you are going to be dealing with a child who is very, very different. And the needs are very, very different. And on the old original IQ tests, they would be scoring over 180. So that's very important to know. And so when you read some books getting gifted advice, you should understand if they're talking about 160, 170, 180, that's the IQ your child has in the old terms. And that makes it easier to do the research on what your child is like. And it requires great flexibility in how the child goes through school, especially in the early grades when he or she is immature because they will get bored and upset or hide their abilities and they don't know how to navigate the social system because they're young, not because they've got a bad attitude. And so it's very important that sometimes you find a way to get them into getting away from regular classroom and you have to deal with whatever the requirements are in your area but those are things to be explored as possible because the mental and emotional health of your child is at risk if you cannot get that accomplished. And it isn't all about academics. It's about the child's being able to use his or her natural curiosity and natural abilities to learn what they are ready to learn and be speaking more with adults than with other children. That's a very important thing for the very highly gifted to have. And when I say very highly, I mean those who are hitting the top of the test. And I would say I have an article that can be shared free that is a synopsis of my book, and it really gives you all the particulars about each level as far as milestones that you can look for. One of the things that's most important, I'm currently writing an update to the Five Levels book, and of the 78 children from all the levels who are in the first book. I have re-interviewed 52 of them so far. <clears throat> and what the parents can do is one of the questions. And what I'm seeing is the child needs to feel that he or she has the freedom to choose what is important to them, not be bullied into your you're successful if you get good grades, or you're successful if you major in this, or if you plan a career in that. And it's important that the child really feels loved and accepted for what I call his or her own essence, the being of the child, not how smart, not what he or she can do, but who is this individual? And if they are loved and admired for who they are and how they are being. It will be easier to give them the social skills they need and they'll do the rest. You just open the doors so they can get through. So that's really where I come from. The academics are simply a vehicle for getting there. And if you stick the child into inappropriate environment, they will get stuck and probably rebel. Well, what I would suggest a parent can do even though you don't, you don't have the right to homeschool and you don't have the right to move to a different school, what can you do? Well, two things. One is at least talk to and bargain with the teacher. You don't want to make more work for the teacher, but you can provide some insight to the teacher saying, and I will be perfectly happy if you let my child read this book while the other children, and there may be a, another child in the class that can work with this, your child, depending on that level in the high range. And so you can get a little more flexibility just to pursue the interests the child has within the school. Another thing is, 
there is a very high genetic component to high intelligence. <laughs> You're smart too, parents. <laughs> Learn all about this and start changing the laws. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's me. You might not have the courage, <laughs> but I have a I have three adult children, for whom I had to do a lot of learning and advocating, and I can tell you that if your child says to you when starting kindergarten, "This is it, I'd rather die," you start trying to move mountains for your child. And I would see that you do have the power eventually to make a difference in the Netherlands. So take care of your child first, but then get to how can you make it possible for more and more children like yours to have the opportunities for flexibility that is absolutely necessary.